Oh, I was just uh, telling the baby I'm going outside. Do a little video here. Uh, anyway, hey guys, what is up? It is Mark Dickinson. I um, wanted to come to you and chat with you just for a little bit here, kind of from the heart and off the hip, and uh, in today's little vlog that I'm doing. Uh, essentially, I'm here to tell you that I see a lot of uh, the photographers and videographers and planners and so on and so forth in the uh, forums uh, saying like, should I jump into this full time? Uh, should I do this job? Is it something that I can do? Can you make a living with it? Um, what should I do next? Um, so uh, from reading those, what I would tell you to do is, is essentially, let me forget that. Let me tell you my backstory. Uh, I graduated high school in 99. I jumped into uh, a law enforcement career uh, from the age of 19, uh, straight out of high school, 19 years old, right into the police field, uh, jumped out there, uh, was on a motorcycle unit, bike patrol unit, did all the fun stuff that you could think of, kind of a really neat job and career. But I learned after about three years that I wasn't truly happy. Um, so I started making different plans. And at that time in 99, when I first started, I actually had a photography business. I started a little photography business, came up with some ideas of what I could do. Um, to make some money with photography on the side since I had uh, every other weekend off or had uh, a few days off during the week there. So uh, I did that. I started a photography business. And I was at that same point where you may be right now just saying to yourself, like, should I start a business? Should I actually do this? Should I just uh, follow my dreams? And yes, I'm telling you, you should. Uh, I did seven years, almost eight years at the uh, police department there where, um, where it was always a constant struggle. It was always a struggle. Struggle with people on the outside, struggle with people on the inside, struggle with pay. Uh, can I afford a house? Can I do so many different things that I couldn't do or I wanted to do? But at the same time, essentially, I had to uh, fight for everything that I wanted. Fight for uh, justifying why I arrested that person or justifying why I wrote that ticket, which I didn't like doing that. I didn't like people making uh, or giving people a bad day and having people have a bad day uh, because, you know, of a simple mistake that they made, like speeding or so whatnot. So then I found photography, as I was mentioning there, to be a very viable source of fun, income, and also satisfaction, self-satisfaction. When I started the police department, I tell you what, I was making $10 an hour. I'm $10 an hour. 99, I was making $10 an hour uh, carrying a gun, making decisions to arrest people, put people in jail, protect people, um, see dead people all the day long uh, in, in death calls in the morning, which is kind of the, the morbid side of it. But at the same time, I wanted to be real with you and tell you, why it was so stressful. It was stressful because I wasn't making enough money for myself uh, as well as I wasn't making enough self-satisfaction happen uh, to, uh, to make myself understand that I love this job and it was fun. The adrenaline was there. It was a lot of fun to do, but there was no self-satisfaction. I didn't see the fruits of what I was doing. I'd always come way later, either uh, through uh, essentially uh, a note from a state attorney's office saying, hey, good job on this, or a memo later on that said, hey, you did a really good job. Uh, thanks. Keep it up. And that was it, which that's what you're there to be paid for. But when it came down to pay, let me show you this here. I, I dropped it a minute ago, but I wanted to uh, pick this up and show you. When I was working at the police department, I had to fight for everything that I, I, I could imagine. This is one of my memos right here from myself to my lieutenant. And it was just basically reevaluating my stance or my feeling of my evaluation where we would get raises. And we would always get like 1%, 1.5%. And so you would get 10 cents, <laughs> 20 cents, 30 cents. It was very bad. It was not a lot of money to do. But my justification for that job was essentially, let me open this up here so you can see it, explaining, this is page two of the memo here, explaining everything to my lieutenant that I thought he evaluated me with, which he really didn't work that much with us on the road. It was our supervisors that did that, and our supervisors didn't give us this recommendation. He just evaluated it because they wanted him to save money. That's exactly what it was. So. Getting 50 cent raises, dollar raises here and there, it was just not something I could do. I tried to buy a house, I tried to buy uh, I, anything, a car, and it was always a struggle. Being 20 years old, yes, I'm not experienced, I didn't live life, I didn't have all kinds of experience to, um, you know, to say like I deserve all this, but at the same time, I was in a profession that I thought was going to be viable for living, and it wasn't. So then let me jump back into photography. I jumped into photography in, like I said, 99. And uh, I said to myself, like, this is a pretty cool thing. I'm 
out here having some fun. I'm, I'm interacting with people in a positive way. And I'm giving them something they want rather than something they didn't want. So uh, going from making $10 an hour to doing a photo shoot at the time, I was charging like $50 or $75.99 for a photo shoot with a couple of images uh, sent to them. And that was really good. 30 minutes, come home, 30 minutes there. I was making three times the amount of, of, of money that I was doing at the police department. $10 an hour versus uh, two hours making, you know, 50, 60 bucks, 30 an hour. There you go. So, and people were happy. That was the biggest thing that I remembered is people were extremely happy. Now, one of the other things that I wanted to mention on this is that my self-satisfaction was skyrocketing. I was extremely excited that people would actually um, hire me, well, they would hire me to, um, to essentially photograph them and make photos for them or uh, provide something to them that they paid me for. How, I'm telling you, that is like beyond phenomenal. That's one of the, uh, the biggest things that I, in, in my photography career that I thought of is said, listen, if someone likes what you do and they pay you for what you do, that is so rewarding in itself. Then people started telling people about my business because they were happy with what I did. My positive side was coming out and I essentially told them I love what I do, which I did. And I loved what I did with the police department, but I just didn't love what I received for doing what I loved. The adrenaline was fun, uh, the pay was just not there, and the self-satisfaction was not there. So jumping back into that, what I was mentioning with that is that doing photography, doing an event service, or doing some type of creative service where you are interacting with a client that trusts you and puts your faith in you, you can do this. You can actually get out there and do this. You don't need the affirmation of, hey, should I go out there and try to um, try to do this? Don't seek that affirmation because there's other people out there that may try to say like, well, you better be careful about this. You better be careful about this and that. Yes, that is all true. You need to be careful about that finances, uh, you know, emptying your, your savings out like I did. So let me tell you about that. 99 I started, 99 I started a photography business. 2007 comes along, 2008, I say to myself, I'm done with this. I gotta do something else that's very enjoyable. And I wanna do my full time, uh, my photography full time. Uh, it felt full time when I was working at the police department because I was always working there and doing that. But um, at this point in my life, I said, you know what, I'm done with it. At, uh, I think it was October 7th, 2007, I uh, told my uh, supervisor, uh, Greg French, I said, listen, Sarge, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm writing on my letter tonight. I'm going to send it in there. And there was another officer in, uh, that was next to me, and he says, you ain't going to do it, man. You're not going to send it in. I said, listen to me. I'm done, man. I, I have to do something to make my life better. I was just getting ready to get married. Um, and my wife had a, well, soon-to-be wife had a, let's see, no, no, two months married. So my wife had a full-time job. She was working a full-time job. And I said, I said, we can do this. I had about $12,000 saved up in the bank there. Let me put this back on. So I had about $12,000 saved up in the bank from, um, from my job and career there. Yeah, it was, it was hard to say. I had a new truck. I had all kinds of things. So I wasn't saving like I should. I mean, I did. I had $15,000 in a retirement. I had $25,000 in my uh, Florida retirement. And then maybe about seven or 8000 But cash on hand, I had $12,000. And I left this police department with $12,000. Um, that's about how much it takes to live in about six months to eight months with car payments, um, uh, your house payment, which we didn't have, thankfully, uh, but uh, either uh, apartments or just necessities, living, eating food, and so on and so forth. $12,000. But I took that leap. I took that jump from a secure, at that time in 2007 or 8, I was making 16 an hour. So that being my last paycheck, jumping into my first paycheck, 2008 comes along. And there was a big giant crisis of there was a big giant crisis of the uh, the stock market crashing and the housing market crashing. You guys remember that? You guys were all around. Uh, your parents may have been talking about it, or you may have been having some issues with it. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed that 2008 is that iPhone sales, uh, a lot of electronic sales were soaring, and the stock market in that sector was soaring. And I was meeting with a lot of people at that time that had um, had the same idea and mindset that I did. So we were headed in a new era here with digital age, obviously, and all kinds of other kinds of, um, uh, and all, and 
And so we were headed in a direction with the, the new era here in 2008 with a lot of people spending money on what they want, but not spending on what they need. And that was something that caught my eye about 2008. Um, but that's what I focused on, that need and that drive when I left that police department. But at the same time, I had such a challenge with the stock market crashing and the housing market crashing, the bubble bursting, that I went through all 12000 almost $15,000 worth, um, worth of my pay. And I bought a lawnmower, as you can see here from my yard, that, uh, that was uh, yeah, like a big commercial mower. And I said to myself, man, I don't, have, I don't know what's going on. I can't book weddings. I can't find work. I can't get myself in the industry uh, properly, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Lindsay, I'm going to have to go back and work at the police department, I told her. I said, this is killing me. And I started a little lawn business. I had like five accounts making enough money to uh, continue what I was doing, doing my job as a photographer, but struggling at it. But then I was looking at myself in the industry, and then the age of blogging, the age of um, social media, you know, famous photographers were popping in everywhere uh, that you can think of. And I said to myself, man, what am I doing wrong? I'm here at this point in time, I'm charging 150 for a family session, uh, engagement session, and individual sessions. And then from there, I was charging like 1500 to maybe $1,800 for a wedding. I was looking at the amount of work that I had in about 30 hours with an album included, engagement session, uh, get to know you session was included, and um, the CD at the time. Now I use USB, so we, you can see how far back we're going. I don't even know if CDs are, are uh, used anymore. But doing that, but evaluating that section there of my cost that I'm doing the, business, the, the weddings for and what I'm charging, I said to myself, Lindsay, I don't know, how, I, how, what am I going to do, raise my prices? I, no one's hiring me at $1,500 to $1,800. So what am I going to do? I told Lindsay, I said, man, I guess I'm just going to have to go back and work at the police department. I don't want to, but I guess that's what I have to do. I was out a year. I still had my, um, my certificate. I had everything. And then I had about maybe $1,500 left over in the bank, and I was starting to wind down from uh, that 12000 after about eight months uh, to $1,500 in the bank. Then I bought a new website. This is where the turning point came. I said, let me try something else. Let me buy a new website. I bought one that was full screen photos. Uh, I don't know if it was good for SEO, but I was able to send out my photos and sell what I wanted in full screen and amazing uh, clarity and, and resolution on this website. And it still didn't track me. I was getting inquiries in. I was getting people that wanted to hire me, but every time they wanted to hire me, it was always, I never heard back from them. So then on my website, this is what I did. And on my website, I took my pricing from $1,500 and I jumped it right up to 3000. I said, I'm just going to take a gamble. I guess it was a gamble. I said, let me put it up to $3,000. Let me jump into that range and see if that does anything better. I spent $500 for a website, $1,200 minus $500, now I'm at $800. I uh, did some more marketing. I put a couple of ads in, um, uh, well, the chamber. We traded out some ads in the chamber. That didn't really help. I put maybe $150 on Facebook ads at the time when they first popped out. That didn't help. Um, but then I said to myself, like, you know what? Let me advertise my pricing on my website. Let me put my pricing on there. Maybe that will eliminate the people that don't want to hire me because I'm just outside of their range. And then people that see the pricing will say, like, yes, I want him. I value him for what he is. So I put my pricing on my website, $3,000 starting. And from that point on, I'll tell you, it was something that was amazing. The inquiries came in. The bookings booked immediately, immediately. Bang. Sent. Yes, we want to hire you. Bang. Yes, we want to hire you. Bang. Yes. Everything that I sent out came back with, yes, we want to hire you, and also with a check. <laughs> I mean, either cash or check when we were meeting at the time. So what happened then is I thought to myself, like, when I was working at the police department, I was undervaluing myself. I was saying to myself, like, I, you know, this is what I am going to be. I'm going to be a police officer, a career police officer. And then I said, no, let me do a photography as a job. And then I was telling myself, this is great. I'm making $60 an hour. Uh, I'm sorry, $60 for the sessions, 30 an hour after you divide out the editing time and so on and so forth. But then I realized that when I was raising my prices, after I raised my prices, I said to myself, like, I made a mistake from the beginning. I undervalued myself 
as a photographer and what people will hire you for. Yes, you can outprice yourself, but yes, you can underprice yourself. And that's where I was at. I thought I was in the middle, but with wedding photography and if you're specialized and that's all you do, there is a lot of people out there that charge more than I do. And there's a lot of people that, way more a lot of people that charge less than I do. And I see them all the time asking that question, what do I need to do to get work? What do I got to do to um, better myself as a photographer to actually make this as a career? And one of those things is, is stop undervaluing yourself and stop second guessing your decisions that you're doing as a business to do that. So what I mean by second guessing yourself is when you're saying to yourself, like, should I charge this much for photography? Yes, you should. Should I charge this much for a wedding? Yes. And at the end of the day, when you say to yourself, should I do this as a job or can I do this as a job? Yes, you can. Anything that you think you can do, you can do it. I'm telling you right now, that's the whole goal of this life is never give up. Try it. And if it doesn't work, modify it, make it work for you. And then you come up with a, a, a new resolution or t some type of a solution that will make your business thrive or get out there and you'll be able to say, wow, I can do this and I did do this. So now, fast forwarding nine years down the road, I have um, a team of four great photographers. I got Laura, Danielle, Jen, and Lindsay, my wife. We all work together as an amazing team. Lindsay's an actual coordinator, but she subs and goes and shoots when I can't shoot with my assistants um, on their wedding. So uh, super amazing. Yeah, like I said, fast forwarding eight years down the road, why am I here? Because I took that leap when, uh, when uh, Chavez told me, listen, you ain't going to do it. I put my, um, I put my two week notice letter down on the, on the ground and I said, I'm not going to do it. And I kicked it underneath the door as far as I could. I was even questioned about why is there a boot mark on your, uh, on your letter? I said, I want to make sure it got way in here so I couldn't pull it back out. But I took that leap of faith and it worked. Uh, it worked for me and it's not a a significant one like I took ten thousand or twenty thousand dollars and put it in the stock market and then turn around and made fifty. I took a leap of leaving a job that I liked and loved but wasn't self satisfying and then jumped into one that I thought was gonna be good and it was I just had to make the right decisions and, and find my pathway. So what I'm mentioning with that is, you know, always protect and maintain your livelihood, but also don't be afraid to take those risks. Get out there, jump into these sessions, uh, do these photo shoots, don't undervalue, don't undervalue yourself and make yourself profitable, make yourself, make your dreams come true. That's exactly what I did. Um, now I've been to, we're down 11 countries uh, doing wedding photography. I've done so many different um, uh, events either out of state or in state uh, it's all because of a dream that I said to myself like I never said I wanted to be a traveling photographer but people found me they loved me they loved the value of what I gave them and they loved the product I gave them so they said come with us uh, we were supposed to have a wedding in Mexico and uh, we did their engagement the couple's engagement session in New York City uh, we were up there and uh, it was pouring down rain but I told him, let's not give up. Let's go and do this. Let's have some fun with this. It's cold. I understand that. But Central Park was cleared out and there was no one in the park. It was just us. I mean, literally just us. Um, and their wedding is supposed to be in Mexico. They moved it to Orlando, but that is fine. No problem. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier for the travels. We have a, a packed wedding season that time anyway um, in June or July. When is it? June. Um, so it, it, was, it was really enjoyable to see these people drag me along with them. I say drag me along because they're like, Mark, we would love to have you come down and, and do our wedding in wherever. So it was all because of that leap of faith. It was all because of that jump that I took, putting that two week notice under the uh, chief's door there and saying to myself, like, I'm done. I am out of here. And it's not because uh, I, I had uh, animosity towards anybody. Um, it was just because I did not want to be in a job that was not self-fulfilling. Uh, the, the pay was part of the thing. Everybody tries to save money. I'm a business owner. I know how that works. Uh, but the pay was not part of it. It was not the evaluations that I got. It was not the criticism that you got for doing a job. I knew it was there. It was just the self-fulfillment of, is this making me happy and full? And it wasn't. So um, I know this was a long rant. I just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much for listening. If you were all the way to the end here, uh, if any of this gave you a little bit of inspiration, please let me know. Uh, it's not hard to make this life positive. It's not hard to make this life amazing. But just don't give up. Make sure you do what your mind says and what your heart says. That's the most important part. If you feel like a bad decision is being made, don't do it. If you feel that a bad decision is being made because you don't know if it's going to work or it might fail, then that's the wrong reason to be not doing it. But 
try. You have to try. If it's a reasonable attempt to do something like starting a business, uh, having your own business, or doing something that fulfills your self-satisfaction, do it. It doesn't matter what it is. Even walking out here, as you can see, it's uh, we got tornado watches coming. You can see kind of the clouds are kind of ominous. That's why the light's bad, and it's kind of bright, but at the same time not. But I said to myself, let me go out here and do this video anyway, because this video might help someone realize that in adverse situations or adverse conditions, you can still do it. Like this video, this audio, the wind, uh, the lighting, the sunglasses, everything that I'm doing here is probably against the grain of, of, of doing a vlog and talking directly to you. But at the same time, I did it and I wanted to do it. And I'm going to put it out there for you to view and watch so that you can get one tiny little ounce of inspiration on it. The shakiness, my arms hurting, everything is going against what I, I should be doing here with good lighting and all of that stuff. But I'm doing it because I know this will help someone. Even if it helps one person or if one does your decisions helps you one time, you make a decision to do something and it's for the positive keep doing those positives. You're going to have some ups and downs, but don't give up. I promise you, uh, just like me, I'm an everyday average person. I have a lot uh, going against me for uh, a business and uh, that meaning marketing and uh, my business uh, techniques and so on and so forth. But I have the drive and I have the need to want to have self-fulfillment. And that is what honestly got me here is the desire and the drive to find that self-fulfillment and the happiness. So Find your happy spot, get out there and do it, I promise you. Leave me a comment in the description below, and uh, also, I'm going to do a couple more of these videos here for you, so if you want to get notified when I do them, just click subscribe, and um, we'll do them. And if there's anything, topics you want me to cover of anything that I've done, gone through in the past 11 years, uh, 12 years, no, 15, 16, 17 years, what are we in, 17 years of, 18 years of photography, uh, my experiences, please let me know. Ask me any questions, I would love to answer them. Um, and do that for you. So, hope you guys enjoyed the backyard there. It's been fun. So, thanks again. This is Mark Dickinson, and do what you do.